Hello ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so today we're going to cover ionic bonding and types of bonding. So let's go ahead and get started. The main key problem with bonding is that it's hard to keep track of electrons. The electrons responsible for chemical properties of the atoms are only those in the outer energy levels. These are called valence electrons and they consist of the S and P electrons in the outer energy level for that particular atom. The core electrons are those in the energy levels below, so they are shielded from bonding. Atoms in the same column have the same properties because they have the same outer electron configuration. Therefore, they have the same valence electron numbers. This can be found by looking up the group number on the periodic table. For example, group 2 consists of beryllium, magnesium, calcium, etc., and they have two valence electrons. Electron dot diagrams, which are also called Lewis dot diagrams, are a way of keeping track of the valence electrons. You'll write them by writing the symbol in the middle and then putting one dot for each valence electron around. You don't pair up any electrons until you have to, because remember, it's that alpha rule. For example, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So first we write the symbol N, and then you add one electron to each side. So we go one, two, three, four, all the way around, and then you pair up the last one. So I want you to write the Lewis dot diagrams for the following elements. And this is something that you need to do on your own, and you're welcome to check with me during office hours if you want me to go over them for you. So let's look at cations. Metals lose electrons to attain the noble gas configuration of the noble gas on the previous period. So they make positive ions or cations. Sodium, for example, is normally 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, so it has one valence electron. Sodium 1 plus, which is the cation, has 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which is a noble gas configuration. Metals have few valence electrons, and these will come off to form a positive ion. So let's take a look at calcium. We're going to take these two away, and then we end up with the Ca2 plus cation. Nonmetals will have many valence electrons and they'll gain their shell uh, electrons in order to fill their outer shells. So what we do is we add in three extra electrons to this phosphorus and we get a P3- anion. So use the electron di diagrams to show how to form the following items, ions, aluminum, chlorine, and carbon. Stable electron configurations mean that they have a noble gas configuration, and all atoms really try to achieve that configuration. Noble gases have two S's and six P electrons for a total of eight valence electrons, and this is also called the octet rule. Cations will keep the name of the metal. So, in other words, calcium, when it's a 2+, plus, it's Ca2+, plus, which is the calcium ion. However, anions will change the ending to ide once they become an anion. So chlorine, when we add an electron, we get the chloride ion, which is Cl-1. Transition metals form cations. It's hard to predict the change because often they will form more than one charge. They can't form a noble gas configurations, but they still try to fill up the orbitals. Some can end up making pseudo-noble gas configurations with full orbitals. So here's zinc, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2. When we have a zinc 2 plus ion, we have a full third energy level with that 3d10, because we've lost those two uh, 4s electrons. Iron as, you can, er, iron, as you can see, can go to iron 2 or iron 3, both of which are stable cations. 
polyatomic ions are groups of atoms that stick together as a unit and have a charge. The first is the phosphate ion, the second is the carbonate, and the final one is the acetate. Names of the polyatomic ions either end in eight or ite. There will be more on those later, later, but I will promise you that you will have to memorize them. Anions and cations are held together by opposite charges during ionic bonding. Ionic compounds are called salts. The simplest ratio is called the formula unit. The bond is formed through the transfer of electrons, not the sharing. And electrons are transferred to achieve the noble gas configuration for each of the two ions involved. So remember that all electrons must be accounted for. So here's our calcium ion. We're going to join it to the phosphate. So when we have this, we have the calcium uh, 2 plus, but we don't have a full phosphate outer shell, so we add in another calcium, bring in that one, now we have an extra, so we have to bring in another phosphate. So we bring in that one, bring in a third calcium, because there's two missing. So now everybody has a correct outer shell. So Ca3P2 is actually the ionic compound, the salt, which is calcium phosphide. So that is our formula unit, Ca3P2, or calcium phosphate. So I want you to use the electron dot or Lewis dot diagrams to show how the following elements make an ionic compound and then write the formula unit. You're going to do that for magnesium plus chlorine, sodium plus nitrogen, and aluminum plus oxygen. Again, do this on your own, but check with me if you would like. Ionic compounds are made up of a positive and negative ion, a cation or an anion. It's also considered a metal and a nonmetal. The simplest repeating unit is called the formula unit. Some of the properties of ionic compounds include a crystalline structure, which is a regular repeating arrangement of ions in a solid, and ions are strongly bonded. The structure is often rigid and has a high melting point because of those strong forces between the atoms. Conducting electricity allows charges to move. In a solid, ionic compounds have the ions locked into place. So the ionic solids are insulators, but when melted, the ions can move around, and melted ionic compounds can conduct. But first, you have to get it to around 800 degrees Celsius in order to make it a liquid. When dissolved in water, ionic com compounds also conduct. When you write formulas with ionic compounds, you have to remember that all of the charges must equal zero. So what you do is you add the correct subscript to make them equal zero. So when we have this sodium one plus and oxygen two minus ion, um, when we bond those together, we get Na2O. For strontium and chlorine, we get SrCl2. For iron three and oxygen, we get those two together and we get Fe2O3. If you notice, you take the superscript of the first one and make it the subscript of the second one, and vice versa. Potassium bromide, you actually have to remember. Bromine has a minus one charge, it's an anion, and potassium has a plus one, so it's just KBr. Beryllium fluoride, beryllium has a two, and fluoride has a minus one, so that makes it Bl, or sorry, BeFl or BEF2. Sorry, my brain is dying today. Metallic bonds are how atoms are held together in a solid. Metals will hold on to their valence electrons extremely weakly. Think of them as positive ions floating around in a sea of electrons. Electrons are free to move through the solid and metals therefore conduct electricity. Alloys are solutions made by dissolving metals into one another, usually other metals. You melt them together and then you cool them. 
If the atoms of the metals are about the same size, they substitute for each other, and this is called a substitutional alloy, which is A and D on this picture. Some substitutional alloys include bronze, brass, and 18 karat gold. If the molecules are different sizes, then the small one will fit into the spaces of the larger one. This is called an interstitial alloy, and that's C on this diagram. Some interstitial alloys include steel and cast iron. Making alloys is still just a mixture. It causes a blending of the properties of the individual elements and is still held together by metallic bonding. Most of the metals we use daily are alloys, and each alloy is designed for a specific purpose. Finally, crystal structures are made of repeating units called the unit cell. There are cubic crystals, body-centered cubic crystals, and face-centered cubic crystals. So these are just some examples. Make sure that you review this material and check with me if you have any questions. Have a fantastic day.